Hey everyone, this is how you can write a 2010 style shoegaze progression. Let's start with an example written by me, and then we'll go into the tropes that I used afterwards. To get started with writing this kind of music, we need some chord shapes, and in 2010 shoegaze, major 7 chords are really popular, specifically major 7 chords that look like this, where they're built on the lowest 3 strings, starting with the root, and then the 5th, and then the 7th, so kind of a 1-5-7 structure. Another really popular shape is a shape built on the A string, which is like a drop 2 major 7 structure. So again, it starts with this 1-5-7, but then we add the 3. So here are a couple examples. Also popular in this era are power chords. So I can play them like this, just the roots and the fifths, and then the octave, and sus2 sounds that are like this here. So once again, in 2010 shoegaze, we have a lot of major seven chords built like this, power chords, sus2 chords. Now there are a lot of other ways to play these kind of sounds, but these are a good starting point, and you can dive into some other ones if you're looking to get deeper into the style. Next up, we have to talk about chord progression. So in 2010 shoegaze, going from 4 to 1, or 1 to 4, is the most common sound, or at least can serve as the framework for a really common sound or progression that you might hear. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we take a major scale starting on G, we have 7 notes. And then we play the octave again. So when I say four to one, that means that we build a chord off of the fourth note in the scale, which is gonna be a C in the key of G, and that's always a major chord, in this case, a major seven chord, so C major seven. And then when we say one, that's a chord built off of the first note of the scale, in this case, a G major seven chord, since we are in the key of G. So if I'm trying to get started with a progression, I wanna try something that maybe just goes G major seven, all the way up to C major seven, or maybe C major seven down to G major seven. And I can again use this as a framework for something else. So for example, if I want to play an idea that maybe goes to a different chord, I wanna to try to make maybe G major seven my target or something that I'm kind of working towards. So for example, if we have something that goes like C major seven, I could go E sus two, and then I could land on G major seven. So it's kind of a target. So this E sus two chord, for example, could kind of just be a bridge to my one. So essentially we have four to one, but I've just thrown another chord in between. Another thing that's done a lot in this style is the use of octaves with our chords in order to help us get more mileage out of the same sound. So for example, if I'm playing this C major seven chord and I feel like I am tired of going down to G major seven, another way to get more mileage out of the major seven shape is to use the octave. So I can jump up instead to the 15th fret here to play G major seven in this position. And this gives me just a little bit more color in my sound. And it also gives you a different kind of emotional effect when you ascend rather than descend. Another example of this would be to go to the A string and jump up here. I could also go to this shape instead, which is the drop two major seven chord starting on G. So now we're adding the third into this sound right here. Going back to the idea of using one and four as a framework, another thing that you'll see in this style is the pairing of chords in a progression. So for example, we could do something like C major seven, going to C5, so it kind of just adds a little bit of development onto the sound, like you can kind of hear. And then we can move to another chord and pair that with something else. So I could go to this E sus2 chord, maybe something I could try is just move a note up, and that kind of creates a different sound. We could go to G major seven, and then pair that with a G5 chord, Go back to, up to C major seven, and something I did in my example is that I went up to a C sus two. So essentially we have, again, this framework of simple chords, C major seven, G major seven, and we've inserted a whole bunch of chords in between in order to add a little more smooth transitional sounds and a little more melody. So yeah, 
if you build your progressions, again, based off of one and four, four to one, and you use a lot of these major seven sounds that have a lot of root and fifth as the lowest two notes, and you build them on kind of the lower three strings, uh, you'll be in good shape and you'll be on your way to writing some cool 2010 style shoegaze progressions. Good luck. Hey, just want to say thanks for watching this video. If you want to support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. Lots of bonus content there. PDF lesson notes for all kinds of different lessons, guitar tabs, guitar profiles, and goodies like that. Anyways, catch you guys in the next video.